Well, my friends, <laughs> I am back, and as you can see, I have been working in real time trying to just get enough ahead of you so that I can walk you through these uh, easy steps. Easy steps, a lot of knitting, but it's, it's, it's not hard knitting. So I hope you have enjoyed working the charts as much as I enjoyed uh, working this chart. It's just a breeze to me, just easy. And uh, I found it very simple to make such an intricate stitch. What about you? Did you think, oh, well, look how intricate that stitch is. But once we, I, once I went through the chart and shared with you how easy it is to just work it and take your time and just go box by box by box or square by square and you have uh, you be able to come up with this beautiful uh, lace pattern too all right so now getting back to like I said working in real time the first thing you're going to notice and I, I don't know if I've said it already but we are working bottom up I wanted to save it to <laughs> till you tried the stitch before I told you we're working bottom up and uh, because bottom up makes it so so much easier to fit most or any stitch in the pattern where top down we have to pick and choose and rearrange and remake stitches to work top down but as you can see this is a nice simple piece I have a front a front and then we'll have a nice back we're going to work it in three pieces and you might oh Jay no we're just going to Cast each one on on a separate needle, so you will need three needles. We are working, of course, number nine. I'm going to go all over all the numbers with you, so don't worry about that. But you're going to find it's a lot easier to just work them all, uh, just kind of in a row. You just, I work this front, then I work this front, then I work some on the back. To get up to a certain point, the hardest thing to me when I was doing, uh, well, working any sweater, is to always have to go back to the bottom or where you started to bring up the other side or to work another part of the sweater. But this one, we're going to work all the parts, all the bottom, the ribbing, the bottom edge. Just go ahead and work them. So once you get to a certain point, you don't have to go back to the very bottom. And you're going to be so relieved uh, to how easy it is to work a sweater, most of the time, bottom up. So let's take a look real quick at, before we get into the real nitty gritty until we get into all the numbers. But don't worry, I have all the sizing and my uh, working formulas already worked out for you. So as you can see on this, as I lay out my sweater that I'm working in real time, again, <laughs> i let you know. All right, I put the chart, here's the chart, 25 stitches in one side of the sweater. And then when I cast on this side and started working, I was working the same lace in this one. But that's just too, just too regular, you know, like, all right, that's what you expect me to do. And I thought, well, why don't I just leave that off? And then all of a sudden something, I just saw this, the swatch laying over there. And I thought, well, what if I use, since I've already done the swatch, everybody hopefully worked the swatch on the, because I won't be working it, uh, in the sweater you've already worked on I'm gonna do is just go over the numbers where to put everything I thought what if I made that a pocket <laughs> is that I thought well that would be different and cute and then plus I don't lose the swatch and it's all it the pattern you've already worked it so I want you to give that a try but like I say you can change anything as we go and I will remind you of that if you want the uh, lace on this side too. I will definitely show you that when we get into the numbers into the schematic into the working formula But here is the front of my sweater and like I said the only thing at the end of this section I'll go over the back to make sure you get it started so that once you start knitting you will be knitting all three pieces You know here kind of together. you just take your time and just see how much and how fast it goes because you're not always starting over. 
Let's see, there's nothing else. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? You will, of course, need three needles, separate needles, number nine. I'll get into that. But each piece is on its own needle so that you don't have to stop and try to hunt a needle. You just go from one to the other. All right, so let me see if there's anything on this little part. This is just my little intro to get you started. The next thing I want to do, I guess we need to get into the size uh, chart and just go with that and uh, go from there. Take a look. I don't really have a name for it yet. I'm still calling it uh, my new stitch. <laughs> a new chart, new sweater. <laughs> That's what I have it for right now. It kind of looks like a heart, and you know, since I did make it up during February Valentine month, I thought about, um, I'm thinking of a, of a title, but I'm going to wait because you know I'm bad about changing the name. So I'll wait and let you uh, see once we get a full sweater. All right, look at this, and then I will be back in just a minute. All right, so here's my uh, sweater size chart help that I have used uh, for all my sweaters on YouTube because the numbers are good numbers. They work. Uh, they're even numbers. They're divisible by four, so they give me a lot of uh, leeway in getting patterns or making making the numbers work together because they're all compatible numbers you know they um, they just work well so let me go over real quick and just kind of give you an idea and see if you can fit into one of these sizes these are generic sizes uh, it's like if you order offline something from Amazon and you just uh, medium to large 1x to 2x or 2x, 3x, something like that, or you go to uh, TJ Maxx or Target or even Walmart. You know, I just get things off the rack, and uh, and I just, uh, the general sizes still seem to work for me. All right, first thing on this, um, on my size chart, when I started uh, knitting my sweaters, when I first came on YouTube, I was a smaller size, so I used number four weight yarn, which I still use today. It can be of any um, quantity. Uh, it can be uh, any kind of material that you like. Uh, but it just needs to be a nice medium weight. And it should, whether you get it from the yarn shop or another store, a big box store, it will normally say uh, uh, size 4. It's a medium size 4. And it's gauged for a number 8 needle. And that's what I used when I used to, you know, when I first came on. As I got fluffier and older and I just saw that I needed to a little more ease, I didn't need to go up another size, a little more ease. I just switch the same numbers that I'm going to give you today. I just start using the number nine. Instead of four inches of ease, I only have to wear, get four stitches. And you'd be surprised what four stitches, how much ease it can give you. So that's how I got to a number nine. So you will need three number nines. Or if you're going to do a number eight, that means you're not, number eight just says that, I, Jay, I don't have a lot of fluff and I don't have a lot of wiggle jiggle and maybe, you know, a whole lot of stuff, you know, to try to hide. I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty straight and everything falls into place and you like a sweater that's a little more form fitting. Then you just work these same numbers in a number eight. Those of us that are older, more fluff hot flashes, whatever, need just a little extra ease, like four stitches, number nine works quite well. You've seen me wear my, my clothes. Alright, so that's take, that takes care of the needles and the yarn. You will need three, remember, for each uh, section. We're work, working bottom up. The first size, I just simply started from a medium to large. Medium to large, you, uh, my number is 88. That is the base number. 88 stitches. That simply means for the front of a sweater, you would get 88 stitches. You would also get another 88 stitches for the back of a sweater using my numbers. Does that make sense? Now, on the front of the sweater, of course, we're going to separate it. You see the little separation there? All right, so uh, that's 44 and 44. So now I have for the back 88, but each front is 44, 44. 
Now, I'm in the middle. I'm the 1X to 2X. I can still wear that. Now, I can't wear this down below my hips, though. This is not a hip sweater. I'm um, that pear shape and, you know, um, fluff and, and age. So, if you're looking to make this to go down below your hips, then we, we're going to have to add some stitches or do something. But we're not doing that tonight. This is just strictly to the top of your hips or at your waist. And uh, we can go from there. All right, so I'm in the middle. Oh, and by the way, my bra size, just in case some people ask me so they can just kind of gauge where they are, my bra size falls from 44, 45, 46. That's where I am. That's where I've been for quite a while because you see I'm using the same number. I'm the one in the middle. So 1X to 2X, 96 stitches. I get 96 across the whole back, and I also get 96 for my front. Now, when I divide the front into two fronts, then it's going to be 48, 48. Then, 2X to 3X, that person is going to get 104 stitches across the back, and then another 104 across the front, and when she separates the two fronts, she'll have 52 over here and 52 on this front. And then, as you can see, you just go up by eight numbers, eight stitches, and you'd go up to the next number, like a one, tw like if it was 3X to 4X, then you have 112, and you divide that for each front. Does that make sense? Just trying to get back to make sure that most of you have uh, all, used this same chart for all my sweaters, and you pretty much have found numbers, like my friend uh, uh, Tina Marie Perry, she said, yeah, I found my numbers. It is so exciting that I can just knit my own sweater. She sent me some new pictures and uh, of her new sweater, and uh, I'm going to do something special for her, <laughs> as I've done for all my friends. Okay, for that, all right, let's see. Now I'm going to go to, let me go to, um, let's see if I need to. We're going to start our working formulas. Let's do our working formulas. Let me just change the camera real quick. All right, let me walk you through my working formula for the sizes. All right, starting with medium to large. Remember the base number is 88. So, and uh, that represents the back. Now, the other 88 is the two fronts, 44 and 44. We know that the lace stitch, because we work the chart, is 25 stitches. So if I take 25 stitches from 44, that will leave me 19 stitches for the side of the sweater. So right here, you can see here is the lace and here's the side of the sweater. Hopefully my hand is still on camera. Yeah, okay. I could back back just a little bit just so you can kind of see, okay? And but I didn't have anything left for a nice front edge border for a front edge right here. Uh, not necessary to put buttons or do that, but just a nice front edge. So guess what? Everyone, everywhere, every size, you're going to get a gift of seven stitches. Uh, I just worked up a little math and seven seemed to be a good number. So now, the border of seven, which represents this front edge on each side of the front of the sweater, the Lace is 25 stitches, and whatever extra left over is the side of the sweater. If you add that up, this person will cast on 51 stitches and knit two rows. You just cast on 51 stitches and knit two rows. All right. Now, let me see what I'm going to go ahead and pull out the next one. There we go. Just pull that one out. Put that back there. Alright, so now the next size. Make sure I'm back in the light. Okay, the next size, of course, is 1X to 2X. That's me. Right in the middle. My base number is 96 for the back. And each front will be 48. So if I take 25 stitches, which is the lace or the chart... And subtract it from 48, that will leave me 23 stitches for my side. So 25 for the lace, but over here I have 23 stitches. Then I get my plus 7 that I, everyone's getting a plus 7. I add all of that up. I cast on 55 stitches for each front. 
on two separate needles, 96 across the back, but for right here on the front when I added this up, 55 stitches and then just knit two rows. Now that's nice and easy, isn't it? Alright, let me just go ahead and do the other one. Okay, on this on this formula, this is my, this is a 2x to 3x, 2x to 3x, and the base stitch is 104, so therefore each front is 52, 52. Subtracting 25 and 52, that's going to leave me 27 stitches, and then plus my 7 bonus stitches that everyone is getting. If you add that up, the person cast on 59 stitches. And just knit two rows. Now how easy is that? You knit your two rows and just wait for me there. And so now, alright, let me go over. Let me let you have a good screenshot of that. And then I'll be right back and we will go over some finer details. Alright my friends. Let's get ready to knit. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to set it set it up and I'm going to take my time to make sure once you get it set the setup, you'll be able to just use it over and over as we start knitting more bottom up sweaters. First thing we need to do is look at the working formula. The working formula gives you the formula line and it shows on there where stitches go. Any lines that are vertical, that means we're going to put a stitch marker. Okay, so I had for each front, I cast on 55 for my size. I'm 1x to 2x. And let me just say this. If you wonder maybe what bra size that I am for 1x to 2x, I can still wear. I can still get into. I am a 44 to a 46 uh, C cup. 44 to 46 C cup. When I order my bras off of Amazon, I... Uh, just get you know I have to get now closure in the front because I can't get my arms in the back <laughs> so if that helps a little bit and then of course I knit my two rows and that's where I ask you to wait for me there so let's get started there's my little working formula and I'm gonna sit it right here so I can keep my eye on it the first thing I want you to tell you is uh, we'll, we'll get come to the back you know you were supposed to cast it on too but um, we're just going to take care of the fronts for right now. First thing, this is going to be the front or the center of my of our sweater. I just put this tape here just so to give you a visual. I do everything, you know, I'm a visual share. <laughs> here's one front over here, and here's another front. The first thing we need to do, are, are, or to make sure of, after we uh, knit our two rows, make sure that the yarn of each side, here's this side over here, but the yarn ends where the needle is pointing in this direction. See there? That's where I need you to... Then the same thing over here on this side, okay? I need for the yarn, the working yarn, to be on this needle pointing in this same direction. Both of them are pointing in the same direction, just like this. They're all scrunched up, but you get you understand what I'm saying. They're not pointing in opposite directions. They're pointing all this direction. Okay. Now, um, let's see. What was I going to say next? All right. So, now go ahead and take out uh, about four stitch markers. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and set in some uh, stitch markers to hold our place. And to, so that you can get a visual how this line looks. Make sure we separate and count the stitches. So, let's start over here. On this uh, front uh, of the sweater, I'm going to start, well now let's do it like we in, in the direction we're knitting. Okay, let's go over here. When we're knitting, we're knitting in this direction. Um, just a throw and I'm just knitting across here. So I'm going to start on this edge here of the sweater, of the front, and I, on my... Um, on my working formula, I have 23 stitches for the side, so I'm going to count uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 
10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23. I'm going to put a marker. Go ahead and put it. We'll, we'll put moving markers once we start knitting. All right, so then the lace, the lace chart goes in the center. Everyone has 25 stitches, so let's count that. Two, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, and one is twenty-five. So now I'll go ahead and put a marker there, and I should have seven stitches. Everyone are, was given seven free stitches. Two, four, six, and one makes seven. So now I have markers in place. Now on this side, since we're knitting in this direction, on this side we will start on the opposite end. We're going to start with the seven stitches because this is the center of the sweater, the front center right here, and we want the two fronts. See, I can even put the same marker so I know this is the front edge. Here's the front edge over here. They're pointing, they're, you know, matching up. All right, so let's go. We'll just count. And two, four, six, seven. And then you'll count the uh, lace right here in the center. Should be 25. I already counted mine. And then your side should match up. And I have 23 stitches here. So now the two fronts need to face each other. Or two front edges needs, needs to face the center of the sweater. Just so you don't get confused once we start, once we start knitting these sweaters uh, bottom up. If you follow the same little rules, you'll do just fine. Alright, so now I'm going to work on this one. We want to, after, the, after I knit my two rows, the next thing I want to do on the side of the sweater, I want to start a ribbing. And this is how I want you to do it. Once we knit our two rows, we are technically, we are on the right side of the fabric. This is the right side. The wrong side you can kind of look at and kind of see that it's the wrong side. So now I'm on the right side and I want to start my ribbing. I'm going to put the ribbing in these 23 stitches that I have on the side. First thing I want to do, I want to knit the first stitch. Now if you would knit, if you would follow me, especially if you're kind of new at it, if you knit the first stitch or first edge stitch on every row, it's going to help when we get ready to sew. So this is just an edge stitch. It's not part of the ribbing. So I simply knit it. Now, the next stitches are the two by two ribbing. And make sure uh, don't you know don't get confused. <laughs> Sometimes I I'll start one ribbing and wind up in another one. We're going to be working. Uh, excuse me, one by one ribbing. Did I say two by two? Sorry. Yeah, we're going to be working one by one ribbing here. So once I uh, knit that first edge stitch, then I start out with a knit one because we're on the right side. Yarn in front, purl one. Then yarn in back, knit one. Purl. Knit. And you're going to work your way towards the marker and see if I can do it real quick on camera so then I don't have to change the thing so you can go back and count go back and look at your stitch if you lose your place knit purl knit so I'm ready for a purl knit purl knit purl Let's do a knit yeah, this is a one by one ribbing. I'm working on something else where I'm working two by two. That's when I got confused. Okay. Don't get your stitches mixed up. Jay, don't get your stitches twisted. Okay. Knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. Now I'm coming up to the marker, knit, and hopefully you will end on a purl stitch right by the marker. Purl. See, I ended on a purl stitch, which is fine. Uh, there is no edge, so I don't have to worry 
about an edge stitch just right here the first stitch now I look at my uh, working formula and I go to the chart now I'm not gonna work the chart because you've already practiced it so we'll just pretend that you uh, are working the chart and you just this is the right side so make sure your yarn, your yarn is in the back and you start on row one of the chart you just, I'm just pretending I'm not going to get the chart out trying to save time and get as much done so I'll just knit across but you're working row one of the chart you're going to work across just like this See? you just work in the chart work it's 25 stitches you've already practiced hope hopefully you've practiced did you enjoy the chart it's fun after a while especially if you did all the uh, you know pre-counting and everything didn't it go fast in fact sometimes I've, I've been knitting so fast I don't really I forget that I've done a, a, a row that I was working on and then I would like oh now which row am I on because it's, it just goes so fast because I'm not having to struggle to know what's what. All right, so I come up to the last. As you're working the chart, you'd come up to the last stitch. You do whatever it says. Now we've already marked, and I forgot to put. We we should be put putting markers in here. I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'd have a regular marker. I'll I'll get some regular marker and slide that marker now. And then you should have two, four six seven stitches left and you will knit these this is a border so you will knit these seven stitches on every row whether you're on the right side or the back side you will simply knit these seven stitches to make the nice wide border I'm not gonna call it a button band because we're not putting button holes but I got something I'm working on to help that then of course now watch this is what I would do for to get started I, if you're going to work the chart on this side, then I will stop, pick up this yarn and this needle, and then I would go ahead and start working. I'd knit the seven rows. I'd knit the chart right there. Then I'd go ahead and knit the ribbing because uh, you can kind of forget or get confused when you get to this side because we're working right here. You need to start with a purl because we end it over here next to the marker with a pearl so you'd say after you've worked the chart then here you'd go slide the marker then pearl one knit pearl 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 knit okay and then you would knit the last stitch, which is the edge, because it's the last stitch. Just like so that each side is um, ex exactly the same. But we're just knitting, in, you know, across this direction. So when you turn the work, keep that one on that side of the front. Then you turn the work. You start, and you then you would purl. Do your purl back on all... Uh, the border stitches you knit you'd purl the chart stitches just like you were practicing and then you'd go back into the rib stitch just read the rib stitch each stitch as you uh, as you come to it just knit purl whatever it is you just read it and work it all the way back and then you come back to this side work this side then you start again on the next row row two of the uh, excuse me, row three of the lace chart because the pearl is a row two. So you do row three and you do the ribbing. You'd follow, just work your stitches as you see them on your ribbing because we've already set it up. Then you'd go over here and work back. There comes a point you can stop it, but I just wanted to make get you into the mind of if you just kind of work these together, not be so fast in like trying to uh, go fast and knit but just I'm gonna go ahead and do this because what ha what I want you to do I tell you what I need the chart so let me stop here and let you kind of think on that and I'll be right back okay now I'm, gonna sw I'm switching back to the real the one that I've worked because 
if you can see it instead of trying to imagine what I'm seeing. All right, so we have the two sides. I'm just going to show you from one side. And you're working across. Now we've got the ribbing set up. You're going to work the ribbing. You're going to, of course, you'll have a marker and you'll slide the marker. Then you'll work the next row of the chart. And then you'll work this nice little front uh, border. Knit on every row. Then you'd go to the other side and work it. We've already got it set up so you'll know exactly where things go. That was the whole premise of what I was trying to get to. So now what I want to share with you is, okay, well how far to work the ribbing? And I'm going to let the chart tell you when to stop. This is chart one. And I, if you notice I have row nine. I have it highlighted in orange to remind me when and where to stop the ribbing. So I'm going to keep working both sides back and forth. Now I've got them set up. They should be a mirror image. If you're just working it plain like the one I did plain, you'll just knit across, you know, you would just uh, it's just leave off the chart. You're just going to knit and then do the border, then uh, knit this and then purl back, then do your ribbing. If you're not going to put the lace on the other side like I I decided not to at the last minute just to save some time so I'm going to continue to work the pattern the chart all of this until I get to row 9 when I get to row 9 of the chart for both sides of the front both fronts of the sweater I will work across row 9 all the way across row 10 will be on the wrong side so I'm going to do the appropriate stitches knit uh, purl back until I get to the ribbon section, uh, purl back, then I'm going to, uh, let me just lay this here and you can see it, after I purl back, now I'm on the right side, okay, and I still have to work, of course, row 11, I still have to work row 11 of chart 1, this is where I start or stop the one by one rib stitch and go into stockinette knit on the front purl on the back and the way I'm gonna do it is I need an extra little uh, a little more of an edge on this side right here see there we had one edge stitch now when I start I'm going to uh, knit three stitches I knit the edge stitch and then two more that makes three put a marker Okay, I put a little marker, a little yellow one or something. All right, oh, I had a little white one right here. Here it is right here, see? I just, instead of knitting just one edge stitch, I'm going to go ahead and do three. One, and then one, two. So now I have three, I put a marker. All right, so since we're doing stocking net, then I knit on across the side, just knit all the stitches. Then I work row 11 of the chart. And then I do my front edge border. Then I do the exact same thing on, on the other front to make everything match. Then, of course, you will be ready to purl back. But you will be keeping this little edge, three stitches. You'll knit on every row just like you're working the front edge. Then you'll move on to chart two, just like you were working. But now you will not have any more ribbing. It becomes stockinette on the side where you're going to knit on the front and purl on the back. See? Just. And then, of course, the chart, you purl on the back. But on these borders, you're going to knit on every row. This, this is a new border. This is the front edge border. But I needed, uh, you know, a couple more stitches just to make it nice and smooth so that when we go up towards the top, towards the shoulders, I'll have something uh, really stable and will hold um, when we get ready to add our sleeve or our, our arm space. All right, so now you're going to be working. The measurement you need to take that I uh, would be uh, the best thing to do is to take your measuring tape and on your body measure from maybe a couple of inches below your belly button all the way up maybe to a little past your cleavage and I needed at least 16 inches 16 inches 
I don't know if how far let's see can I see this is, if this is on camera. I can back back a little bit. I don't have much space. So I know how how long I'm gonna be working on each front. Each front I'm gonna keep going till I have uh, about 16 inches. Then I'll stop as I get close to 16 inches and each front, remember the other front, let me just see if I can put it over here so you can get a visual. Okay, here is the opposite front. So I'd stop and work on it. Let's move Bird. Bird, I'm sorry, you can't get in the, you can't be in the camera right now. Got to get this on here for my friends. All right, so what I would do is I got close to 16 inches. I'm going to stop and I'm going to count these little ridges. And I'm just going to count starting at the very bottom, very bottom ridge, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-eight, forty, forty-two, forty-three, and forty-four is right there by the needle. That gives me an idea of how many ridges both fronts should have to get me close to my 16. It could be right if it's not, um, you know, to my four, my uh, 16 inches or 15 inches or whatever it is to go from your belly button a little below your belly button an inch or so below that, all the way up to above your cleavage line. Just right across that little space right there between your cleavage and your under your neck. Just somewhere there. Because we have to reduce these stitches to make so that we can go up to the shoulders. We can't take all these stitches all the way up. We got to take, we're going to have to bind off some of these stitches and do some decreasing and then start working each shoulder section up but for right now I'm leaving you with you are knitting you are we have I've shared, uh, shared with you how to set up each front each section whether you're gonna put the lace on both sides or just plain where to stop the ribbing at row after you fit work row 9 you purl back on row 10 and before you or when you start row 11 or know that you're going to be working row 11 that's when you're going to stop the ribbing but I need to have three stitches here on this edge or two extra stitches you already have one edge stitch and then you give me two more that makes three put a little marker and then you just knit across work the chart work the front work the front work the chart if you're going to do it or just knit across like I did do the pearl oh and don't forget on this side don't forget when you get over here the last three stitches put a marker because I need the three stitches on this edge can you see the little border that I made that's all I need was a little border so that we'll have something really nice when we set in our arm space then you'd pearl back or you know work everything back 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 knit the last three stitches turn the work knit the first three stitches on this side and start again and just work your chart up it to uh, let's see to get to around my 16 inches I work the chart three times so that's one two one two one two and then I needed a little more so I worked chart one and I stopped on row, after I finished row 11, I purled back on row 12 and I stopped. So that's a good place for you to stop once you finish, um, you know, go as far as you need. Now, I'm short. You may have to do the full, you may have to repeat um, the full uh, chart four times. But each little section, that's a repeat right here. Here's one. So that's one, two, one, two, one, two one for me 
See how many repeats it takes you to get up to where you need above your cleavage line, but not all the way up to your throat. Because we have to decrease these stitches. Okay, so real quick, here is my back section. I wanted you just to see it so that you could see all three uh, parts of the sweater. Of course, you're going to look at your uh, formula and you're going to get your base number. Of course, mine, I'm right in the middle. I'm, my base number is 96 stitches. But what I had to come back to remind you of. All right, so the back, I cast on 96 stitches. But remember, when we want to work a uh, one by one rib flat, okay, we need an odd number. So 96, I need to add one more stitch. So everyone will have to add one stitch to your base number when you cast on your back section. So now I've cast on uh, and I have 97 stitches. Now I'm going to simply knit two rows just like I did the front sections of the sweater. I knit two rows to get this little just a little difference. I'm trying you know I said I was trying something a little different and uh, to see how I like it and so far it's really nice and neat and uh, I just like to look up for right now. Not for everything but for this. So I start right here on the edge. I have my edge stitch. Okay, now once we knit our two rows, we are on the right side of the fabric. I knit my edge stitch. Then the first stitch in the ribbing starts with a knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, all the way across so that I can end, this is why we can end, it should be the same. I'd have a knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, and then I will have two stitches left, so I want to have a knit stitch at the end, and then the edge stitch I knit on every row. It's not part of the ribbing, it's just an edge stitch. And I do that, and of course when I turn the work, when you're on the wrong side coming back, let me move bird for a minute, when you're coming back, of course, you still start with a knit stitch to start the edge, but this time now you're reading the stitches from the wrong side, so it'll be purl one, knit one, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, all the way until you come back to the edge and in uh, with the matching stitches over here. And you will continue that. Now, this is the only thing, like I say, it's easy because we had row 9 on the chart to help us stop. Well this one we just, you could just, um, you look, you count the stitches right here. I'm going to bring this close. You just count your stitches and you want to, uh, after the two rows that we knit, one, two, then count one. Can you, I take a needle or something, a little double point and stick under there. I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or you can just tally on a sheet every time just to make sure that you get your nine stitches, uh, nine rows in for your ribbing. And then on the wrong side, of course, you uh, rib back and then you will be on the right side as if you were working row 11 of the chart. But all you have to do is just knit across. Well, don't, oh no, let's back up. Once you have your uh, row 9 and then you purl back on row 10. Alright, so row 11, since we're not working the chart, you're going to knit 3, put a marker. That's what I was trying to get to. Put a marker on your back because I need those little edge stitches right there. Knit on every row. So 1, 2, 3, put a marker, knit all the way across to the last 3. Here on this side, put a marker and knit those stitches. Turn the work, knit three, purl all the way back to this side. And at the end, you will knit three, turn, and then continue to work the back as to the length that you have your fronts. Because, you know, everyone may have a different number in the front. Like I say, I'm short. 16 inches took me up to where I... I thought it would be a good place to stop right above my cleavage line to give me 
a chance, give me space to, so I can start decreasing that neckline and working my shoulders. But if you're taller, it may take more. You know, you may have to go up further. But work your back up to as far as you can to match your front. And you can even sit and count these little ridges and see if you can get there. But as long as you have the back in a good place so that you don't have to come back to the down here and start with knit two rows and then start the ribbon. That's just, that takes so much out of you having to go back. But if you just go ahead and work all three like I've shared with you and have the back up to the same point where you stop the, each front, you will be a happy camper.